John chapter 12, 12 those that are found to say, I've got it. If you like to use technology, go to the YouVersion Bible app, click on events, and you'll have a way to digitally download the sermon notes to your device. Look for the Greater Life Church on the YouVersion Bible app. Here it is. The next day, when the large crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him. They kept shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to talk for just a moment from the topic, fit for a king. Fit for a king. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we pause now to give you praise. We pause now to ask that you would clear our minds of anything that would hinder your word from going forth. Father, we ask in faith right now that whether on campus or online, we would be knitted together by your Holy Spirit. Father, we totally trust you in this season to show us why this season is so important. And Father, I pray in faith that for every person that's here or online that's seeking, that's, that's hungry for more, that they would find indeed what they need in and through Jesus Christ. So Father, now as the word goes forth, have your way in this place. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Thank you so much, ushers, for all you do. Thank you so much for all you do. Fit for, fit for a king. We typically begin our messages in what's, what's called a big idea. The big idea helps to kind of capture the, the theme and tone of the sermon just in case you forget everything that the pastor said. Here is the big idea for today's message. Today, we celebrate the king. Today, we celebrate the king. Can you imagine this scene? Uh, the one people who had long awaited, he is now here. The world has anticipated his coming. The Messiah of the world is present. The Savior of all of the people, from generations of old to this specific moment in time, we can declare that Jesus is here. And for those who are keeping score, his, his entrance into Jerusalem is going as planned. See, according to the Jewish calendar, it is the festival of the Passover. Somebody say Passover. You've seen that word in Scripture before, but oftentimes it gets lost with, with the generations that are changing. But, but the celebration uh, for the Passover is the celebration for the miracle when the Lord God told the people of Israel to place the blood of an unspotted lamb on their doorposts because death was coming. With the blood shed and spread, death would pass over that home, and the firstborn would be spared. Somebody say Passover. And so Jesus, our Passover lamb, was entering Jerusalem during the festival of the Passover. Oh, friends, friends, I need you to just get ready to write. Scribble this down. Number one, I want you to write, timing is everything. Please get that down. Somebody say, timing is everything. Look at your neighbor and say, timing is everything. This is the week that changed the world. Oh, God, I feel that right there. This is the week that changed the world. See, what's happening beyond the scene as well as behind the scene is this. 
Jesus is finally allowing people to celebrate him for who he is. See, when we read the Gospels, Jesus frequently pushed back on the people calling him the Messiah. Now, why is that? It is because, as Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Y'all, Jesus even told his own mama the very thing at the wedding at Cana. Why? Because timing is everything. You got to understand how to operate within the timing and purposes of God in your life. A lot of us right now are frustrated because we've gotten ahead of God or behind God. A lot of us are missing out on the blessings of God because when God said do it, we said I'm going to wait. When God said wait, we said I'm going to go ahead and we're off timing with God and we're missing out on purpose. But not Jesus. Oh, God, Jesus in the text. He was always about the will of the Father. Somebody say timing. This, my friends, was the time. Also, by allowing the people to celebrate him, Jesus is letting everyone know, those who believe him and those who hate him, he's letting them know. I'm the king. Oh, God, that's good, y'all. He's, he's letting them know I'm, I'm the king. This, this is a major move, y'all. This is, this is a boss move. Jesus is letting them know I'm the king. The, the, the one you've been waiting for is in your very presence. Give me that donkey. Saddle him up. Why? Because I'm the king. And as he enters Jerusalem, then we experience a celebration fit for a king. And this is why we as believers must take time to read and understand the scriptures. It is so important, y'all, that certain things get passed down and that other things we enter in on our own merit. See, there are some principles and some, some, some truths in Scripture that you need to discover for yourself. Help me, Holy Ghost. And oftentimes we miss it because it's passed down from a preacher or a pastor or a Sunday school teacher, but we never unearth it for ourselves. Right, right. Believers must take time to read and understand the scripture. See, the text says, uh, the large crowd heard. Mm -hmm. The text then says, the large crowd took palm branches. Then the text says, the large crowd shouted. See, the words of Jesus' miracles, most recently raising Lazarus from the dead, that word had spread. Folks were talking. Oh, God, just, just whisper to your neighbor. Just whisper anything. Folks were talking. Make some chatter in the sanctuary. Come on. Folks were believing. Keep talking to your neighbor. Just tell them how good they look. Folks were talking. Folks were believing. Folks were hoping. Here is the word, y'all. Don't allow crowd mentality to lead you. See, while timing is everything, I'm already at point number two. Truth is foundational. Ah, oh, truth is foundational. See, can you imagine the scene? Jesus is entering Jerusalem. Palms are waving. Go on, wave your palm. Wave your switches. Come on. Come on, just wave them. Coats and cloaks line his path. Jesus secures a donkey. Keep waving. Don't get tired. Switch hands. And he sits. And then the people begin to cry out, Hosanna. Hosanna, loosely interpreted, is save us. They, they're, they're shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Somebody say, somebody say Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Y'all, this is the moment. You can rest now. Amen. Some of y'all are turning red. Amen. Y'all, exercise is important. Amen. Somebody's like, oh, Lord. 
Y'all, the crowds in our passage, the crowds, they wanted a warrior king who would fight against the tyrannical rule of Rome. They got the son of God who would die as the Passover lamb to save their souls. Uh, They wanted a mighty warrior. But they got a messianic king. They they wanted someone to upend the government. But he chose the humble route and he said, I'll do that in my own time. And so here is again the principle, truth is foundational. See, for those of you in the crowd today, both online and on campus, you must gain a clear understanding of who Jesus is. Let me slow down. A clear understanding of who Jesus is. Jesus ain't who we make him to be. Oh. Y'all, this, 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 is, this happened then and it's happening now. We don't get to make Jesus who we want him to be. Jesus is who he is. Somebody help me preach it. He is who he is. In other words, despite what the crowd wanted or believed, Jesus is who he is. And what I've discovered in my own life and in my own ministry, y'all, you can be close enough to wave palms at him. You can be close enough to shout at him. You can even be close enough to have walked with him. But if you believe, if what you believe is not rooted in truth, you can still miss him. It says in verse 16 that at that moment, his own disciples did not fully understand. And I just begin to ask the question of the text, how is it that they missed? Because when you try to make Jesus who you want him to be, you may miss him. And so in our minds, we have to backtrack and reevaluate the Jesus of Scripture and understand who he is, what he has done, and what he is doing in the life of his church. But y'all, it's still a celebration fit for a king. We just were able to see that crowds ain't always where it's at. What crowd have you been chasing? What what crowd have you been aligning yourselves with as it relates to the belief of who Jesus is? What what crowd do you do you find yourself most often liking in social media? But when you compare what they say with the Jesus of Scripture, there's always a deficit. So either you've got to bend your belief. Or you've got to go along with what they're doing. Timing is everything. Mm. Truth is foundational. Now let's be clear. Jesus came to Jerusalem to die. Oh God. This is the week that changed everything. This is the week that changed the world. Jesus came to Jerusalem to die. Jesus had a date with death. Oh, God. That that, that demonstrates that he was committed to keeping his appointment. And just in case I get too happy next Sunday, you do know he died. Oh, God, the the same people who shouted, hail him on Monday, shouted, nail him on Friday. Oh, I feel my help up in here. He he rode in on a donkey fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy, which says, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. And yet days later, he was beaten for our sins, humiliated in our place. He was hung between two thieves, uh, deserted by his followers. Then he hung his head and died. He died for you and for me. 
He died to pay the price for my sins. Look at your neighbor and say, didn't he die? He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the soldier declared, surely this must be the Son of God. Do you know he died? He died because we needed a real king, a king who sacrifices for his people, not a king who is served by his people. We needed a king who gives himself to us, who gives his life for us. That king is Jesus. Timing. Timing is everything. Truth. Truth is foundational. I got one more. Here it is. Transformation is possible. Please get that down. Transformation is possible. What you do with Jesus will make all the difference in your life. I need you to write fast and look back up at me. What you do with Jesus will make all the difference in your life. How are you doing? Not compared to what the world says, but compared to what Scripture says. How are you doing? Jesus offers authentic and eternal transformation. Pastor, why are you slowing down? Because I want to make sure y'all are hearing me. See, these are the moments in the calendar where we get to kind of step back, evaluate, and make adjustments. Step back, evaluate, and make adjustments. A couple weeks ago, I had a chance to drive my family down to, uh, to Galveston. Help us, Lord Jesus. And we went down to Galveston. And uh, I hadn't been to Galveston since, uh, oh, well, they're not going to talk about that. Pastor used to cut class, but that's a whole other story. Uh, drove down to Galveston, and 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 um, I'm, I'm driving, following my GPS to go to where we were staying, and and the place that we were staying was not on the GPS, so I had to step back, reevaluate, and figure out where was I trying to go. I eventually found it. We found a spot, but but it was at that moment that I realized some of us are are just going along. We think we've gotten this thing all figured out. But, but when, we, when we measure up who we are becoming with what Scripture says we ought to be, uh, there are some deficits. There, there are some lapses. There, there are some misses. I, I, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to help you. Wave your branch. It may help to go down a little better. Y'all, transformation is possible. Good, 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 good. It's possible. Pastor, what, what do you mean it's possible? Well, a, a couple of things I want to share with you based upon uh, what, what Scripture teaches. Number one, I need for you to understand believing who he is according to the Scriptures. Believing who Jesus is according to the Scriptures. Not, not according to what you think he ought to be. Not, not according to what, what some fake theologian on the street says he is. Believing who he is, according to the scriptures. Secondly, receiving what he offers. A lot of church folk are far from God. Ooh, I didn't run on that. That was, that was strong. A lot of church folk are far from God. Don't look at your neighbor, just look at me. A lot of us are far from God. And I believe it is because we've not received what Jesus offers. See, a lot of us have joined church, 
but we never joined Jesus. See, when you join Jesus, things begin to transform in your life. When you join Jesus, there, there is some fruit that is attached to your faith. When you join Jesus, there is some growth that follows along your lifestyle. Yo, let me tell you, I'm telling the truth. I don't cuss as much as I used to. Nah, that, that, I need something right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not making light of sin. You know, pastor don't play with no sin. Y'all, there has been, there has to be growth. And y'all, I'm sorry, we, we get comfortable with our sin, y'all, and we justify our sin, and we live uh, completely opposite of what the Lord has called us to live, and we think it's okay, y'all, it's not okay. And I believe that it, it begins with believing who he is, according to the scriptures, receiving what he offers third, and finally, walking in his freedom. Yeah. Walking in his freedom. Walking in his freedom. Walking in his... See, when you walk in his freedom, you bypass all that bondage that previously held you. When you're walking in freedom, you're experiencing what it means to live the abundant life. When you're walking in his freedom, the, 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 the burden that you carry, the yoke that you have is that of the Lord because the scripture says his yoke is light. So you're able to freely move throughout your life honoring him with your life. Life and your choices. Believing, believing, believing who he is according to the scriptures. Receiving what he offers. Walking in his freedom. There is no other, there is no greater blessing this Palm Sunday than you getting that right. Yes. Friends, this is, this is what it's all about. Jesus came to Jerusalem because he had a date with death. Jesus had to die because he was the only one qualified to die for mankind. He stood in our place upon Calvary's cross. We deserve to die. But Jesus said, no, nah, I got this one. And the wrath that we deserve, Jesus took the wrath upon himself. What do the scriptures say then, Pastor? Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us born of a woman was born into sin, shapen in iniquity. That's just a big word that means we have a propensity to do what God doesn't want us to do. You don't have to teach babies to be bad. Babies are bad all by themselves. Leave them alone for five minutes. You'll find out. <laughs> for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us, we were born with our backs toward God. Secondly, but God proves his own love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died in our place as a demonstration of his love for us while we were still jacked up. For the wages of sin next is death, which means we earned death. We earned it. You know, I got a part-time job at, at Dallas Seminary. It's part, 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 part-time. It's part of a part. And I can't always tell when I get paid because it's part, 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 part time. But the other day I had worked a little extra and I put in some extra hours, had a special project going on and, and, and then, you know, a week or so later and then I noticed my account, whoa, I had earned considerable wages compared to what I usually get. I earned it. I worked and I received compensation for it. Let me help you. We have worked and earned death. You've earned it. How we live our very nature, you earned it. Oh, my God. But the good news is 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, I'm not just going to give you bad news. I'm going to give you good news. Help me, Holy Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Jesus, I know you think, Pastor, I feel so condemned, I, I feel so haunted, I feel so miserable. Beloved, that is just the enemy trying to keep you in bondage. When you place your trust in Christ, when you believe who he is, when you receive what he's done, and you begin to walk in that freedom, you will know there is no condemnation. Yeah, you're going to slip up air and nine in. Somebody say air and nine in. But I guarantee you, as you walk with him, as you walk in his freedom, you will experience what freedom is all about, no condemnation. So when he brings up your past, you say, no, no, devil, that ain't who I am no more. The Lord Jesus has redeemed that. He's washed me. He's cleaned me up. I got one more. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness. One confesses with the mouth, resulting in what? Salvation. Salvation. Woo! Do you remember your day? I recently had to write out my salvation story. It was a wonderful moment in my life. My mom sat me down on her love seat in her room, and she asked me a question. She said, Stephen, are you sure that you're saved? I said, well, what, what, what do you want to hear, Mom? Uh, yes. She said, well, see, we can't, we can't take this for granted. And I sat on the sofa with my mom, and she began to walk me through, uh, at that time, it was called the four spiritual laws. My mom taught me that God loves me and has a plan for my life. My mom taught me that I was sinful and separated, and therefore I couldn't know that plan and love and experience it. And then she said that Jesus Christ is God's only provision, payment for my sins. And then she said, Steve, baby, I can't get you into heaven. Gannon can't get you into heaven. Grandma and grandpa can't get you into heaven. You can't piggyback into heaven. You got to come into heaven on your own two feet. So, baby, I need for you in faith and sincerity to pray this prayer with me. And if it speaks to your heart, I want you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ right here on my love seat. And me and my mama had a Holy Ghost shouting good time on her love seat. Why? Because she didn't take for granted that because I was a junior deacon that I was saved. She didn't take for granted that because I was in the junior choir, I was saved. She didn't take for granted that because my grandfather was the pastor, I was saved. My heart is burdened for the Lord's church. And I want you to walk in the freedom of the Lord today. Right on time. I want you to bow your heads right where you are. On campus and online. I want you to begin to sincerely ask yourself the question my mom asked me. You may say, Pastor Brown, I know that I'm saved, but man, I just keep to keep sliding and slipping. Just hold on. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. We're going to have all to prayer for that. But beloved, I don't want us to go through the motions this resurrection season. You know, I, can, I can envision the Lord Jesus coming through Jerusalem on that donkey. Making sure that he, he keeps his date with death at hand. But then understanding fully that he wasn't dying for himself. He was dying for me. He was dying for you. He endured the cross, the shame, the horror, the terror. So that on March 24th, 2024, we could walk in freedom. No condemnation. 
So if you're here this this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I I heard the scriptures, I heard the sermon, but I I'm unsure. I'm just not sure about my relationship with the Lord. And Pastor, I don't want to go another day without being sure. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask our invitation counselors to be in position. After I pray, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. And we're going to sing. And if you say, Pastor, that's me. I, I want to embrace authentic salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thanking you fervently for this moment. Father, we don't want to be a part of this crowd mentality that just comes when everyone else comes, just comes to church out of, out of religious routine. Father, we want to dig a little deeper. And we want to truly experience a relationship with Jesus. We now understand how important timing is. And Lord, what a joy it is to know that you have us here at this place at this very moment. It's no accident that we're at the Greater Life Church now. So with that being said, Father, I ask in faith that you would touch that heart of that man, woman, boy, or girl who doesn't know you or is unsure. Father, I pray that you would remove any shame, any embarrassment but that you would allow faith to take over. That you would touch hearts and touch minds. And Lord, I pray in faith that they would find the, the faith to allow us to lead them in the way of salvation. Father, don't let them leave the way they came. Then, Father, there are those who are here who who have already placed their trust in you, but they've never joined our church, never become partners in ministry with greater life. I pray in faith that you would engage them to come as well. Finally, Father, for those of us who are, we're believers and, Lord, we're, we're just kind of missing the mark. Father, we've gotten a little comfortable with our failure and our sin. And, Father, we simply need to recommit ourselves to you in faith. Just sort of a rededication, a, a renewal, a, a revival. Father, touch every heart that this applies to. Leave no one untouched. And Father, for our online viewers, I pray in faith that you would challenge them to just type one or two words so that we can circle back and follow up with them and engage them privately. Lord, this is our prayer. This is our plea. In the name of Jesus. Let everyone say amen. Would you stand with me? Give God a hand of praise right where you are. Stand up. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, y'all.